uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel on Bushkin. Today, we're going to be talking about this thing here, the M48A1 Patton. The uh, Patton is a tank that is near and dear to my heart. It's one of the first reviews I ever did in World of Tanks Blitz over six years ago now. Yeah, six years plus, at least seven. Wow. It's a long time to be doing this YouTube gig. I've been a pretty lucky guy. Um, and it's one of the most widely produced uh, post-WW2 tanks around. The M48 was designed to replace the M4 Sherman, the Pershing, the 46 patents from the Korean War, and nearly 12,000 of them, according to the Wikipedia page, were built <laughs> by the American Locomotive Company and Chrysler from 52 to 61. And... I've actually met people, or rather talked to people like JC Ware who've worked on tanks that were close to the pattern, like the M60 and stuff. And this is a tank that was actually not a medium tank really, as it's used in Blitz, but was a main battle tank. And it's not surprising when you see it up close to other tanks. The pattern is freaking enormous. It is a chunky monkey. I call it van the Vanilla Gorilla. And the reason I've always thought of it as the Vanilla Gorilla, because it's not really the best at anything, but for all that, it does everything pretty bloody well to the point where it's very, very dangerous if left unchecked on the field of engagement. Blitz. It is a genuinely massive tank. It's a tank that is a lot larger than people realize. It's like easily the size of a T110E5. And it's sharing something else that the T110E5 also has in common. The removal of a coupler. The hatch you can see on the driver's side or not on the driver's side on the machine gun side here of the pattern uh used to be bloody enormous and it used to be a very big weak point and it made going hull down in this thing oh so difficult um you had to really get elevation to use your turret so that they couldn't hit that hatch rather than just being able to hull down on the same level but just hide the lower glacis which is really the easiest way to hull down and works on all maps not just maps that are you know inclined or have different styles of terrain and because of that the pattern used to be pretty good and i had there was a guy called skid back in the day who used to just shred in the pattern on the asia server it was a good mate of mine in the storm clan and i used to play with skid and he was an absolute monster same with pa um they both rocked the pattern um and it's interesting too for me that the journey from the tier 9, the M46 pattern, to the tier 10, the M48, it's very, very different tanks. Um, the tier 9 is a svelte, kind of subtle, uh, no armor, beautiful movement on the fire, on moving on, firing on the move kind of tank. Uh, with a tier 9 gun, a 105 millimeter gun, and the M48, the tier 10, is a tier 10 105 millimeter gun with better pen. It, like the pen is crazy improved on the uh, M48 versus the M46, but it's actually got a lot of armor. This is a tough tank to pen when you can get it into a hull down position, and that's that's a good thing because obviously you love having good armor, but you do actually drop a degree of gun depression when you go up to the T10. It's only nine degrees of gun depression. Now nine degrees is enough. Uh, you'd rather have 10, hell, you'd rather have 12 or 13, like the Comet or the Kenny Otsu or something crazy like that, but you don't have that. You've got nine, and that's just fine and dandy. Your pen numbers are ever so medium. Uh, 250 millimeters of AP, uh, 300 millimeters of heat. Because it runs heat, if you do want to give up a little bit of DPM, you can take it to calibrated shells uh, and stick that to 330 millimeters of pen, and that is actually pretty freaking handy uh, for your heat but you give up basically 200 DPM. I go backwards and forwards on this because 30 millimeters of pen at tier 10 can be the difference between getting a win and not getting a win at times. Just like 200 DPM can be the difference. So it's very much up to your personal preference and you can never go wrong with more damage and, and more ducker. Like tap, 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 pew, pew, pew. It's really, really good. The pattern retains a lovely degree of on the move uh, power and it basically is just an all-round good tank you're not going to struggle with it it doesn't have great dispersion but don't get me wrong it's got good dispersion 
Uh, it's just over 0 0.3, 0 0.31, I think it is. Let me just check that for you. Um, and this is from memory. Yeah, 0 0.317, because I've been playing this game for a long, long time. Uh, but that's obviously not marksman level dispersion. But it's not bad either. Its aim time is 2.9 when you've got it fully maxed out, which is, again, pretty good. It's got much better turret armor than most of the T-10 mediums. It's got great gun depression as opposed to most of the T-10 mediums. It's got high alpha and it also has a high explosive round that while it only has 53 millimeters of pen, is actually 440 alpha, uh, which is quite good um, as far as heat, as HE rounds go. So if you can find something that shouldn't be there with you know the, the buttocks of American tanks and stuff, you can punish it and punish it quite well. Uh, how do you play this thing? Well, that's what we're really here to talk about. The pattern is, as I mentioned, vanilla in a good way. That means you're not locked into play styles like you are with a lot of the T10 mediums. If I'm playing the T62A, I'm working on flat surfaces, trying to get areas that just cover my drive wheel but allow me to use my turret. And it's very, very specific. The pattern, you can brawl in the pattern, you can go hull down in the pattern, you can basically do anything you want in the pattern. It's not the world's best marksman, obviously, but it's good enough that if you're at the back of the pack and you're forced to try and hold a flank, it's lovely. And it's got enough armor that tanks like this are going to pen you, but they're not going to pen you easy. And let's talk about that for a little bit. When you're brawling someone and you're in a tank like the pattern, um, what you're really looking to do is use the armor not so much to stop shots. Think of it like this. The more armor you have, the harder it is for them to aim at you. The longer they take to aim, the lower their damage per minute is the more likely you are to win the game. Armor isn't just a zero-sum equation. Watch this. This is great. This is one of the things I love about the pattern. Quick up, quick move, quick firing, on the move, accurate, on the move. And this is a, a game that I played on stream when someone asked me to go and have a crack at the pattern. It was really an instigator for me to go and play the pattern more because I've always liked this tank. I have really liked it, even when I felt like it was a little bit underpowered because of that coupler. And you've got to remember, back in the day when I thought that this tank was underpowered, medium tanks were stupidly OP, namely Rusky medium tanks. That's a 640, uh, 150 millimeter shell that I just bounced there. I believe that's from the Waffleman tractor. Um, because heat back then penned everything. Uh, if you were running heat, it would go through spaced armor. It wasn't meant to, but it still did all the time. You could shoot T-54 gold into the side of an E-100. And I did videos on this on mines where there was an E-100. And I just smashed heat through his drive wheel and his spaced armor. 330 millimeters of base heat that like, It was crazy, right? And not only would that go straight through the drive wheel, but it would do it without losing any DPM. So you got no damage penalty for playing with heat. It's one of the reasons why we had gold warriors, uh, wallet warriors, like snake eyes, my good mate snake eyes, who would just carry 22 rounds of heat, two rounds of AP, something crazy like that, or 30 rounds of heat, two rounds of AP, and just fire heat and everything. T7, T9, T10, didn't care. You can see working these ridge lines is what this tank was really built to do. Using camo, using cover, taking shots on the reload, putting that DPM to use and trying to hit drive wheels there so that the enemy tanks are stuck in front of my Amigo. And obviously things are going from worse to bad and then to worse again here. As our flank was successful and all other flanks were not successful. And this is a 2v5, which is tough considering that the other member of the two is a long, long way away in sport. And there's a lot of people hitting me as I start working my way through here. But you've got to love how many shells I'm actually bouncing with this thing. The turret is so much stronger than people realize. And if you get elevated in the M48A1 pattern, it's a glorious, glorious thing to behold. You can see here just working the magic, trying to get shots, trying to get elevated, working around, looking, I'm thinking of a HE shell in the buttocks. 418, that's that HE damage I was talking about before. Um, and I'm using all the tricks in the book here just to stay alive and stay alight with a Waffle Me tractor pushing into me. And I'm now obviously on my own as well. Um, 
This is perfect round for the M48 A1 pattern. You want to be baiting shots with your turret. You want to be baiting shots. Uh, this is tough too. If you watch, you'll see I start getting a little bit of lag here. And I'm really worried about this shot missing. And it makes me eat another shot. I don't know if it shows up that much on the replay. This actually, this is kind of weird. On the live stream, you can see it jerk around, but not so much here. I don't know what that's all about. Kind of weird. Um, people, oh god, people vastly underestimate this tank in the world. Um, it's a lot tougher than people think, and it is also very nice movement-wise. It's it scampers over the ground pretty well uh, as we try and put our turret in front of the waffle tractor's gun can't actually do too much. There we go. We get the bounce. Put a HE round into him. Only 385. I leave the HE in here. What I want to do is track the IS-8 as he comes around and then stop him on the top of this mountain and drive past him. But it doesn't work. And I don't know. We didn't get his track at all. <laughs> no! 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 That's the M48A1 pattern. Get hull down, but do it anywhere. Brawl if you have to. Use your DPM. Hit the pens. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Look after yourself. Stay safe on the battlefield. Remember to like the videos and subscribe too. That would help me out tremendously. Tell your friends. Tell your buddies. And uh, bye for now. See you, team.